Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas, this is how to make a third person platformer in Unity and welcome to episode 7. So this time we are going to take a look at new scenes, we're going to take a look at rotating this skybox right here to make it look a little bit more alive, and we'll also start looking at death. So for example, when we fall off whatever surface we have here, then we die. This is where the scenes come into play. So first and foremost, let's actually start by looking at rotating this skybox right here. And we can do that using a C-sharp script. So if we right click in our scripts folder, create C-sharp script, I'm just going to call this one rotate sky. So let's open that up in Visual Studio. And depending on how you want to do this, you could set it via a variable, which means you could change it at any point from a different script if necessary. Uh, I'm not going to set that up as a static variable like we have done with the global scripts, but you can if you want to. So we don't need the annotations and we don't need void start. We're just going to have one variable, which is public, and it's going to be a float, and I'm going to call it rotate speed and I'm going to set it equal to let's have 1.2 and F now the reason I've done 1.2 F is because this is a float so if we put a semicolon there and have a look at our global score everything we've done previously is an integer so int if we want to do a decimal number this is where the float comes into play but because we're doing a decimal number we need to have the F after the number so to rotate this skybox, all we need to do is access the render settings for the skybox and set uh, this number into it. So render settings dot skybox. And remember, it's always case sensitive dot set float. And in brackets and quotes, we need to put underscore rotation because that's what we're setting here the rotation and we want to do it relative to the time itself so in the unity world there is something called time dot time and that is the real time running of the game itself if we were to set time dot time as zero it would freeze everything would freeze if we were to set it as one everything would be just normal if we were to set it as two everything would be double speed and so on so because we need to, this to rotate relative to the game itself, we do need to put time dot time and multiply that by rotate speed. Close bracket, semicolon and save. So the reason we've done this is because theoretically, if your rotation speed was just one, and you always wanted it to be one, you wouldn't need this extra line here. You wouldn't need the variable. But because we want to change the variable at given intervals, if necessary, we put this in here to rotate by the variable. So if we head back to Unity, no errors. Perfect. So game object, create empty, F2 to rename, and let's call it skybox object. And then just drag and drop, rotate sky onto there. And now if we press play, we should be able to see that in motion. So it looks like there is a little bit more life to the game than what there actually is. And it could give a different visual impression if you needed to do that. Uh, a good example would be if we press play again and we can actually change the rotate speed whatever way we want, like so. So it's up to you how you want to deal with it. So I'm going to set it back as 1.2 and I'll keep it as 1.2. So. Next thing, let's look at scenes and death. So we've saved this scene, which I'm going to resave now, holding control and pressing S. Perfect. So if we go to file and go to new scene, we basically create a new scene that does exactly what it says on the tin. Now, the idea of what's happening here is we can switch between these two scenes. And what this scene is going to be is our recycle scene. And what I mean by recycle scene is when this scene loads up, it will direct us to whatever level we want to go to. So if we go file and save the scene as, let's call it um, redirect level. And within here, 
we are going to set ourselves a way of coming back to different levels. But to do that, we need to go into our build settings. So file, build settings, and then click add open scenes. You'll notice it appears at the top with a number zero next to it. So if we close that, head back to our level 001, and do the same again, file, build settings, add open scenes, you'll see it adds that number one. These numbers are important. We'll be directing ourselves to these numbers pretty soon. So if we go to our redirect level, we need to create a script here, which will allow us to take us to whichever level we want. So right click, create C sharp script. And let's have this as, let's have it just named the same or almost the same. So redirect to level. Now, the reason we do this is because once we leave the, the level 001 scene, everything will reset back to normal. So if we fail it, for example, if we die, everything will reset. Now, what we're going to do is we need a, a namespace at the top. So we're going to have using Unity Engine dot um, scene management semicolon. So without this here, we wouldn't be able to use the scene manager lines of code that we're going to in just a moment. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a variable which is going to determine what level we want to go to. So public static int, and we'll have this as, uh, in fact, what should we call it? Let's have this as redirect to level and I'm going to make it default as one for now. Obviously when we get more levels, more scenes, everything, this is where it comes into play. So let's get rid of that note there, we don't need it. And on void update, if redirect to level is double equal to one, then we need to do the following. So what we're saying is if it is this, whatever we have it set as, then we need to take ourselves to level one. And we do that by going scene manager dot load scene and in brackets, redirect to level and save that script. So that should be all good. Yep, no errors. And we just need to attach this script to a game object. So game object, right click, rename, redirect, script, and drag and drop that onto there. Now, theoretically, when we press play here, it will take us to the other scene. So I'm just gonna save the scene there and then press play. Perfect. So, we can use this to our advantage now because we can actually make this a way of dying. So if we go back to our main scene, and what we're basically gonna do is have an area all the way down here which says once we collide with it, we die. So game object, 3D object, cube. And let's put it at least quite far down because you know we want to maybe see a bit of scenery or something. Uh, scale, I'm gonna have 100 by 100, so it covers a wide area. And I'm gonna turn the mesh renderer off and I'm gonna tick is trigger, because much in the same way as we've done with the gems, we need this to be a trigger so we can actually collide with it. And if we go to our scripts folder once again, right click, create, uh, I want to have this uh, named as uh, C-sharp script, and let's just call it level death. And let's open that one up. We don't need any of those methods right there or annotations, but we do need to use that scene management again. So using unity engine dot scene management semicolon. And we need to use the method on trigger enter. So this is void on trigger enter. And once again, it's auto filled. We don't need it private and we don't need this in here. 
And all this means is that when our character collides with this object, we need to take ourselves to that other level. And because that is scene number zero in our build settings, it's always going to be zero. Obviously, unless we change our scenes in this build right here, which we, we will do, but we'll counteract that by modifying the scripts, um, probably around episode nine, I think. So what we'll do is scene manager dot load scene and in brackets zero semicolon and save. So now if we press play, we can wander around all we want and let's fall off. And we've not collided, have we? So it helps if I actually attach the script to the object, doesn't it? So that cube is the big death object. And I'm going to right click and rename as well. So death object. Uh, so let's try that again. The joys of trial and error. So running off will take us to here and reload. Now, although we see that scene behave a bit strangely, we can always counteract that by saving this scene, going back here, going to redirect level, game object, UI, raw image, and we can set that raw image as completely black. So it gives the impression of it's just a black screen while it kind of loads, theoretically. And we just need to set the anchoring position to stretch down the bottom and then zero out everything in the transform. So now what happens is this scene is completely black when we press play. So I'm gonna save that, head back to level one, press play, and a couple of things I'm gonna note. Notice the time is counting down. This will be reset when we rejoin. We've collected some of these gems, so obviously they will respawn. There we go. Now you may notice the lighting has changed. It looks darker for whatever reason. I will point out that when you change scene in Unity, the lighting does uh, be it is affected by uh, whatever you do. Now this isn't actually the case when you build the game. It's only a little bug which is in the engine, and it's been in there for as long as I can remember. So don't freak out if that should happen. So. Guys, you can see we're well on the way to getting something working here. And next episode, what we're going to look at is creating start and finish areas for uh, at least this first level. Because uh, you see we're actually getting somewhere now. So we've got a way of dying and respawning. And we're also going to start looking at animations. Specifically, what I want to try and create is a moving platform. So just add a little bit of difficulty to the game itself. Uh, so at this point, we're probably halfway through the series and yep, yeah, it may not look like we have a lot, but the last half of this tutorial series is going to be like a steamroller. There's going to be loads that we get done because we have the principles down, we have the basics down, we have the fundamentals already. So we can go from here, no problems at all. So guys, until that next episode, thank you very much for watching.